You want it harder? Here's a harder one. Now, this is another um, high frequency sight word vocabulary question. Comes from the Texas Science of Teaching Reading Exam, the 293. And all I got to say is I love it. I love it because it's longer. And you're looking at this and you're like, uh, <laughs> that's going to take me more than a minute to read, right? I mean, this one right here, you're like function word, sight words. You got this in like 10 seconds. And this one here is, uh, these are the newer questions. Now, we're, it's still involving high-frequency sight words. I want you to take uh, two minutes now or three minutes, whatever it takes. When I say two or three minutes, um, you are different than me. And I, we're both different than the other person's watching, right? Everyone's different here. And you may need more time to process this. Whatever that is, just this is a marker. I'm just giving you a gauge. So whatever this means to you, pause now, read it, and then we talk about it, okay? Pause now, go. Unpause. Were you able to read it in two or three minutes? That's the mark. Hopefully you said yes, right? Because you're going to have a hundred of these questions to do. Um, depending on your exam. But, you know, if you're if you're doing, you know, a lot of these exams, they have a hundred questions. You're going to have to get them down to two to three minutes. Uh, this question here has got a, a, a structure of a beginning, middle, and end. It's got like a one sentence beginning, kind of like the opening. It's got like the middle part, which kind of gives you the scenario. And then it's got the end, which is the question. So we have a, a, a beginning, a middle, and an end. So I'm just going to start with the beginning. This usually is where they tell us, like, who's our friend. So this says here, second grade teacher. So second grade, let me just circle that. Second grade. Kids are, what, seven to eight years old. Second grade is they're transitioning from, you know, um, you know, uh, they're still working on fluency. They're not there yet. They're still working on some basic building up that fluency, right? They're not quite, they're not fluent yet, but they're still building it up. Teacher, this teacher, the second grade teacher is working with students to develop automaticity. Okay, building up that automaticity in high frequency, in recognizing high frequency words. Bammy whammy, there's our friend. High frequency, you know, word, frequency words or sight words, right? So the beginning, this is a question involving high frequency sight word vocabulary, high frequency words. Okay, now what type of scenario is it about high frequency sight words? Go to part two. Several English learners. Okay, great. There it is. This is the scenario involving high frequency sight words involving English language learners, right? Often, what's the issue? They often misread or omit high frequency prepositions. Ooh, high frequency prepositions. Those are function, like func those are types of function words, like in, on, of, by, when reading uh, um, connected text. So they're reading a text that's connected that uses these words. Now, I just want to write down those words here. Um, I love how they give this example. So, so team, you, this is giving you language that you can put in your essays. Like um, the student often mis, misread or omitted, omit, stu the, the students here often misread or omit high frequency prepositions. And then they give an example, uh, then they give parentheses, E dot G dot, and then they, 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 they list them. This is exactly how you want to write your essays. You make a statement. The students struggled in or, or misread or omitted high frequency, site, uh, high frequency words involving a constant diagraph. Or the student, you know, uh, often misread or omitted high frequency words that were irregular. And whatever it is, then we have to cite an example. And we always do parentheses, right? E dot G dot comma, and then list our examples. So it's, it's modeling how you can, you can um, um, mark your strengths and weaknesses in the essays. Okay, keep going. So they're struggling with these words. In, on, of, by. Now in and on, these are uh, closed syllables. So vowel, consonant, vowel, consonant, and they're considered regular. I mean, you can use phonics to decode them. And um, of and by, 
uh, is a, a vowel constant, vowel uh, a consonant vowel. They're kind of irregular, like of, uh, uh. It has a uh and a v. Of, it doesn't it doesn't sound right. And by, ba, by maybe that maybe that's fine. But but these are words that can be tricky, right? Okay, so they're they're kind of these words. They they could be tricky. Some of them are regular, some of them are irregular, and the student is often um, having difficulty with these, these words. Some of them are open syllables, some of them are closed syllables, and they're, they're kind of tricky, right? Okay, um, all right, so how are we gonna help them? Well, with, with these words, they're all, by the way, function words. We, when we do function words, you can't really do them, and you can't like show a picture of a function word. It's not like you show a picture of a cat or a dog and you can use that visual support, but you could like uh, use these words in a simple sentence, like the cat sat on the rug. And then you could have that simple sentence, uh, you know, the cat sat on uh, the rug. And in that simple sentence, then you could draw a picture to reinforce it. But, but when you're doing like prepositions and function words, you know, it's best to teach that stuff in context. So using basic meaningful sentences. Does that make sense? Okay, so, all right, so here we go. So it says here, how are we going to help them? And, and look how they say it in question three. Which of the following strategies for differentiating instruction for the English language learners would best scaffold their learning in order to promote their accuracy and automaticity in reading high frequency grade level function words? Whoa. <laughs> What a, what a wordy sentence. They get an A plus for name dropping or word dropping, right? Look at the word dropping. Which of the following strategies for differentiated instruction for English language learners would best scaffold their learning in order to promote accuracy and automaticity, A plus plus, in reading high frequency grade level function words, right? Uh, team, this is giving you language that you can put in your essay. You could be like, if they ever ask you, like, why would you do this strategy? You could say, uh, this strategy uh, helps differentiate instruction for the student and helps them scaffold and promote accuracy and automaticity in reading high frequency grade level function words. If you gave that as a reason why you're doing an activity and it matched up with your activity, the grader would be like, uh, A, are you hearing me? So it's giving you language and stuff, ideas you could do to put in your essay. Okay, so basically what this is saying is, uh, this is about high frequency words. We're dealing with English language learners involving prepositions. How do you teach this, right? For high frequency words like in, on, of, by, do we use word grids and teach this stuff in, in uh, isolation and then in a text? Do we do that? A word grid is like this. Sh e p word grids uh, or Elkonen boxes or things like that, they would really, this would be a great activity for phonics, but not really for like in, on, of, by, and function words, right? It's a no-go. This is a great activity. You could put this in your essay for words like, um, you know, um, words that are phonetically regular that, that are really juicy to decode, but not really for sight words, right? High frequency, and especially high frequency or regular set words would be a no-go. Or this one right here. Um, um, uh, so it's not A. It's not B, uh, C either. Point out the parts of each target word that are and are not decodable and providing additional practice with the non-decodable elements. Ugh. I don't, I mean, you could do that. Take a word like what. Yeah, I'm sure you could do that. Be like, there's the what. And there's the ta, that's the decodable stuff. And then the non-decodable stuff is the, and you you emphasize it's the a uh, sound. What uh and then you're and then you teach it. Okay, so yes. So a kindergarten teacher could do this. That's true. You could definitely do this when introducing a new word, but this isn't something that you would then have them practice with the non-decodable parts, right? That's ridiculous. This is something that the teacher would do informally. They'd introduce the word, they do the stuff that's decodable, and then they just say what, right? 
they're not going to like pull out those irregular parts and do a separate lesson on that. No, they would just, you know, in the context of learning it, they, they might point out some elements of the word and then have the students memorize the word what. So this is a no-go too. No-go, no-go. How about D? Engaging the students. Listen to this one. Uh, listen to it. It's not the right answer, but listen to it as a an idea you could put in your essay, okay? Like if you could fit this in, listen to it. Engage the students in a timed, I'm going to circle this phrase here, a timed collaborative match game. Hmm, I never heard timed collaborative match game with a partner in which they try to improve their collective rate matching pairs of target words. I mean, that just sounds so cool. It sounds so complicated, but I mean, basically it's saying um, working with a partner match words time, right? But they're making it sound so hard, like, right? Engaging the students in time, collaborative, like a time collaborative match game. <laughs> they're matching words with a teammate uh, in which they try to improve their collaborative uh, match uh, rate matching pairs, of, right? I mean, it's so wordy. But hey, you know, uh, if you can find a way to take some of that and put it in your essay, uh, good for you. You'll probably do very well, okay? All right, it's a no-go because these aren't words like that, right? These are words that we want students to, to learn. And, and th the best way to learn words like this, let me clear this off. Best way to learn prepositions, these high-frequency uh, sight words, right? In, on, by, of is to have the students practice reading the target words on, in, by, of, um, in meaningful phrases, and, and then support those phrases with il illustrated uh, that are illustrated to reinforce understanding. So we would use a phrase like, uh, the cat uh, sat on the rug. And there would be a picture or illustration or visual graphic or sensory support to um, support the language in that sentence. And in a, in a meaningful sentence like this, the student would get exposure to the target preposition, in, on, by, above, below, right? Uh, so they would learn it, but they would learn the word in a meaningful phrase, and there would be a visual support to support it, right? To help it. Okay. Team, I know we could have got to the answer a lot faster. Um, I just wanted to take time on this one. And uh, I think it's just got a lot of great review of ideas and it's a little challenging. Okay, so I think it's a great question to do. If you're looking for a push test, you can go take a look at this. This is a great one. Uh, the answer is B, it's on the science of teaching reading test. I know I get a little over carried away with this stuff, but I'm trying to uh, maybe give a little extra to teachers out there. Okay, so uh, hopefully that's helping. This is obviously a harder question. If you were to go back and do this on the day of the test, I'm hoping that when you cut through this, and you know it's like beginning, middle, and end test question structure, right? I'm hoping you're like, oop, high frequency word question, right? High frequency sight word question involving ELL students with, with prepositions. And then basically it's like, uh, um, what strategy did you do to help you know ELL students with prepositions of these high frequency words. I'm hoping that you could get that in like a minute. If you just summarize it just like that, just pick like those five ideas and there's your there's your question. And then you're like, how would you teach prepositions? Not with this, nope. Uh, not, not really with decodable and non-decodable elements. Like who does that, right? Uh, and not really with like some collaborative matching game. No, you're gonna teach prepositions, these high frequency words that many of them are irregular. Hey, this one sounds pretty good. And maybe that becomes a one minute question. Maybe, right? Okay, let's keep going. 